Dimensions hit track Whip Slap came out in 2015 and rocked the dance floors. Shortly after Serum came out, it became the synth of choice for many music producers. The bass sound in Whip Slap is a perfect example of the power and the sonic characteristics of Serum and Wavetable synthesis. Wavetables are essentially a series of single cycle waveforms that allow for interesting morphing and sound design possibilities. And in this video, we're going to be taking away three lessons from designing the whip slap bass. It shouts out to Dimension for creating this classic. By the way, my name is Stranger, and if you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with drum and bass and dance music, then this channel is for you. Comment down below and let me know what other bass sounds you want to learn how to make. And also, all the presets that I designed today can be downloaded for free down in the links below. All I ask of you is to like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can keep doing what I do. As well, I have a new track out with my good friend and talented MC from London, Plain English. It's called Preacher and it was recently featured on DJ Mag. You can download it or stream it down in the links below. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm providing additional exclusive content. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so the waveform that I found that worked best to create the whip slap bass is called Dist Bass Dropper. Now, it's important that you move the wavetable position to the correct setting to get that nasal sound. Otherwise, you won't get the same sonic characteristics. So around there. So the first thing to learn from the whip slap bass is learning how to create movement from the wave table. So a wave table is essentially a series of single cycle audio samples or frames. And if you move from A to B, it creates an illusion of movement. Kind of like how a movie is a series of still images, a wavetable is a series of single cycle frames or audio samples. So we're going to be using LFO1 to create some movement and we have a V shape at a quarter note and we're going to assign it to the wavetable position. So now you have that movement. Now we're just going to adjust the amount. So you get kind of like that talking bass sound. It sounds like it's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Popping over into the effects, we're going to add some distortion. Just to add a little more grit. Now, the second thing to learn from the whip slap bass is how multi-band compression can bring out certain sonic characteristics, which were previously hidden in the waveform. So just make sure the multi-band section is enabled and you just adjust the threshold accordingly. You can choose to crush either the high, mid, or low bands. With this sound, I have all three bands crushed equally. Now, the third thing to learn from the whip slap bass is adding additional effects to bring out the sound. So you could add distortion. I'm using Decapitator here. If you don't have Decapitator, you can use the free saturation plugin by SoftTube called Saturation Knob, and this is just as good. All right, so this is the main bass and it simply plays a long note like this with gaps in the middle. And I have a beat here so you can hear it with the beat. Hey, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products. I have a gnarly serum preset pack with over 150 face melting base presets. As well, I have some Ableton project files to jumpstart your next idea. But if you're not ready yet, you can pick up my free serum preset pack and my free sample pack. For more information, check the links down below.
Now notice in the bass pattern, there is space between the notes. We're gonna fill that space with the bass sound played two octaves higher. And we're gonna be editing the space a little. So I've duplicated the main bass patch. So this is gonna be the high patch. And simply in the effects section, I've added some EQing bring up some of the highs, and then I've added some hyper dimension to make the sound wider. Now I have the retrig mode enabled. That just ensures every time I hit the key, it sounds the same. So now it sounds wider. Now remember, we're gonna be playing it two octaves up, so up here. Now I've added some EQing to bring up some of those high mids. And then I've added some distortion. And then some reverb to make it sound a little more spacier. Since this is playing two octaves up, it's not really occupying any sub frequencies. So adding some reverb is okay. So here are the high notes and it's just filling up that space between the main bass notes. All right, let's hear the sequence in full. Now, just for a little more added spice dimension, adds a sawtooth lead on top, and I'm just using a sawtooth lead from the Techno Clash pack. It's a pretty simple preset. It's just a sawtooth with um, 16 modes of unison with some reverb and some compression. And it's just playing this short pattern with a pitch bend at the very last note like this. Let's hear it in full. All right, so as you can see, it's a pretty simple bass to make. It's all about making something that sounds complex, simple by using techniques and streamlining your process. All right, so I hope you got the lessons here, which can help you go a long way in creating a rich and full sounds. Remember the power of creating movement using the wavetable position, as well as using additional effects in multi-band compression, which can bring out sonic characteristics that were hidden before. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video.